Okay, this video is about going through your milestone check test uh, corrections. So have your green pen ready and only do corrections on those questions that you have gotten wrong. Okay, follow exactly whatever is written on the screen, you will also write it on your paper. So I'm going to go with question number one first. Question number one, what is the missing value in a box? So 60,000 is already written. 20 is already inside. So you notice I put a tick just to be very careful of the numbers that I have uh, already used. 8, I have also used an 8. So you can see that the numbers that is missing is a 1, right? And this 1 is actually in the thousands place. So the answer is 4. Okay, now question number 2 has gotten me quite a little upset because um, there are a few in this class who do not know how to multiply by two digits yet. So uh, I'm going to do the workings and this is a good chance for you to revise as well. Okay, now you notice that when I do my workings, I spread out the numbers far apart so that it is neat so that I don't confuse the numbers. So make your workings big so that you can see them easier. So we're going to start with 6 times 3 first. 6 times 3 is an 18. So I'll put a 1 on top. And then followed by 0 times 3, which is 0. 0 plus a 1, which is 1. And 2 times 3 is a 6. Okay. Now I've used the number, I cancel it off if you remember. Now I'm going to start it off with 6 times 1. 6 times 1 will be a 6. 0 times 1 is still a 0. And the last one is 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is a 2. So the final answer that I will have will be 8, 7, 6 and 2. So the answer is 2,678. Answer is 2. Okay, so question number 3. Question number 3 says when 2,364 is divided by 5, what is the remainder? So I'm going to use 2,364 and divide it by 5. So we're going to start off digit by digit. I can't divide with a 2, so I put a 0, which leaves me with 2, and I bring down one digit at a time. Okay, I get 23. So 23 divided by 5, the closest I can get would be 20. Okay, so I have left with a 3. I bring down the next digit, which is a 36. The closest that I can get is 35, which is 7 times 5. And I have a remainder of 1. Bring down the 4. The closest I can get is a 10. Okay, so which gives me a remainder of 4. So in this case, the answer is 4. Remainder 4. Okay. Now question 4, there are a number of you who has forgotten how to do the rounding. If you recall, I said that in step 1, you are supposed to box up the digit that is in the place value that they want. And step number 2, you are supposed to actually do an arrow to refer to the digit that is behind the box. So if you follow these two steps, we want to round to 100. We will box up 0 because 0 is in the 100th place. We refer to the number behind it, which is a 9. So what does that tell us when we talk about 9? It means that we will need to round up. Correct? So when we round, we round the numbers in the box. 6 will still be a 6. 4 is still a 4. But when we round up because of the digit 9, 0 becomes a 1. And the rest will be 0. So in this case, the answer is 3. Okay, now question number 5. This is where shortcuts do not work. 
Why? Because what do I mean by shortcuts? Shortcuts will be people who actually try to guess the numbers without even doing any workings. What do I mean by workings? Whenever it comes to number patterns, I would expect that there is some kind of a working like this. But when I look at the class, I notice that people who has this question wrong happens to be people who don't even bother doing the arrows, which got me quite upset. Okay, so from 400, 560 to 460, yes, we know that the figure or the number drops by 100. Okay, now as to the number next, we do not know how much it drops. So let's do the hard work because for marks, I will do my best to make sure all my workings are in. So I do not know what's the difference. I will go and do the workings, which gives me one, zero, one, zero, zero. So wow, I seem to see a pattern now. Between the first and the second number is a subtraction of 100. And the next number, subtraction of 101. So if you go by this pattern, then you can kind of guess that maybe this will be about this. This pattern will look like this. This pattern will look like this. We are not sure, right? We are not sure, but we can always try and test it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test with this. Okay, this numbers in the highlight to see whether the pattern is really true or not. Okay, and there I got it. I know the pattern decreases like that. So for me to find out what is this number, I will need to take the previous number minus 102 and I will have the answer which is 41257 okay so that's it for page 2 still quite an easy question this is a 2 mark question this is a 1 mark question and this is also a 1 mark question all right now, question page 3. In a box, there were three times as many red marbles as green. So based on this sentence alone, I know that red marbles is the one that's three times. So red and green, I will show that red has three times compared to green. Now, the next sentence says, 180 fewer green then red 180 fewer green than red so that means the difference here is 180 now from here you can see this two units extra is actually 280 so two units is 180 we always want to find out how much exactly is one unit so we divide it by 2, we get 90. So what is the meaning of 90? It means that this is 90, this is 90, this is 90, and this is 90. Okay, how many marbles were there in the box? So you're supposed to find the total, which is the same as finding 4 units. And that's going to give us 90 times 4, which is 360, 360. That's option number 4. All right, now question number seven. Ravi bought four boxes of strawberries. Each box cost $12. So let's for now find out how much total do we have to pay or does Ravi have to pay for the four boxes? 12 times four. Okay, so we multiply and we get 48. This is for the price of four boxes. Now the Ravi gave the cashier 100, so how much change did he receive? So he gave a cashier 100, but the item only cost 48. So we are trying to find out how much is this. Alright, so let's take 100 minus 48. Let's do our regrouping. And we have it 52. So the answer in this case is 52. That's for question number seven. So this is a two mark question and this is also a two mark question. All right. Okay, let's turn 
So the next page, form the smallest even number. So in class, I always say you try a few combination, and try to see whether your answer is really correct or not. So for my number to be smallest, I've noticed some of your classmates actually did this, which is very good. They listed out all the ones that are even numbers. So this number, this number, and this number has to be at the last digit because we want them to be an even number, right? So we can have six as a last digit, we can have two as a last digit, or we can have eight as a last digit. Now remember there's a condition here, we want it to be the smallest as well. So for it to be the smallest, let's keep the digit to be one first because everything that starts with one is the smallest, right? Followed by, so we're done, we cancel out. And the next smallest digit could be a two. So I'm done, I will also cross it out. Okay, I've used two already. Okay, now the next smallest digit will be a six. Okay, and followed by seven and eight. Now, let me double check. Is the last digit an even number? If it is, then my answer should be correct. Okay. Next, question number nine. List the first three multiples. Multiples means multiply. So your seven times table goes like this. Seven, 14, and 21. All right. Now, question number 10, it seems that some of you have forgotten what are factors. Now, if multiples is about multiplication, factors will be about division. So to list out all the common factors, let's start with 8 first. So what are all the factors that can come along with 8? We have 1 times 8, 2 times 4. So you notice I go by ascending order. And when we carry on, we could have um, 4 times 2, which is about the same. So all the factors are out. 1, 2, 4, and 8. Now I do the same for 36, which is quite a big number. So I may need a little more time. Always start with 1 first. 1 times 36. 2 times 18. Well, if I'm not good with mental sum, I can always try to do a division. It's okay to spend time doing it slowly. Okay, so that's how I know it is 18. Now, I can also do a 3 times. Okay, so how do I see the 3 times? Let me also do the division. So I know it's times 12. Now, I can also do a 4 times table because I know my 4 times table, 4 times 8 is also 32. Okay, and I also know that in my 6 times table, I see a 36 as well. Alright, so I think that's about it. 7, I can't. 8, I can't because 8, there's already 1. 9, in my 9 times table, I will have 9 times 4 because 9 times 4 is 36. So in order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 cannot, 6 can, 7 cannot, 8 cannot, 9 can. 10, we can't divide. 11, we can't. 12, we will have it here already. So we are done. So when we talk about common factors, we are looking at factors that appeared uh, in both of the numbers. So let's take a look at what are the numbers that repeats. Okay. We have got 1. 1 is always a factor of anything. We have got 2 also. And lastly, we have got 4. So the answer is 1, 2, and 4. Okay? Now, the common mistake made by most of you in the class is you have forgotten what factors are. You thought that factors are multiples, and a lot of you are listing out all your multiples happily. Okay, that should not be the case. When it comes to factors, it is the opposite of multiples. Question number 11. Okay, this is an uh, idea of finding out the difference. So, 
a car costs eighty five thousand and a motorcycle costs nine thousand four hundred eighty seven. How much more did the car cost then? So how much more then? I know I'm looking at the difference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract. Okay, I'm going to try to regroup from here. And nine times eight, nine minus eight is one. Nine minus four is five. I have to regroup here to get a fourteen. Fourteen minus nine is five and seven. So seven five, five one three. Okay, with careful subtraction, this should not be a problem. Now let's look at question number twelve. Three thousand and forty two spectators were at a stadium. There were twice as many adults as children. So. Twice adults, so adults will be twice as many compared to children. And I'm told that there's a total of three zero four two. So if you take a look at the nicely drawn model, these are all equal units. So how many equal units makes up three thousand and forty two? It is three units. So in order to find for me the children, I will need to know how much is one unit. Okay, so I'm supposed to take 3042 divided by 3. So it is testing us on division again. 3, 0. I can't divide, so it's a 0 still. Bring down the 4, 1. I have got a 3. With a remainder of 1, bring down the 2 is 12, divided by 3 is 4. So I know that there's about 1,014 children. Okay? That's for page 5. Now page 6. David earned 2,000 over dollars. He spent 1,000 of it and saved the rest. So why don't we find out how much is the rest first? Okay, let's try to subtract away what he spent to know how much he saved. This is 16 minus 9, which is 7. This is 11 minus 8, which is 3. 3, 7, 5. Now, this is for savings, and this is savings per month, every month, per month. Right, if he saves 375 a month, how much is he going to save for 6 months? So we're going to take 375 multiply by 6 because he's going to save that every month for 6 months. So times repeated addition times by 6. 5 times 6 is 30. 7 times 6 is 42. 42 plus 3 is 45. 3 times 6 is 18. 18 plus 4 is 22. So the answer is 2250. Okay. Now, question number 14. There are some sweets in the bag. These sweets can be shared equally among four children or nine children. Okay, so it can be shared in, in, in two different combinations. What is the smallest possible number? Now, if you share it with four children, so that means in terms of the number of sweets, huh? that you will need let's say you share it with four children if each children gets one sweet you will need four sweets if each children gets two sweets you will need eight right because four times two each if you are giving each children each child three sweets so 4 times 3, right? It will become 12. So it can go on and on. You realize that this is actually testing you on your multiples. Okay, and so on. So of course, I can go on 32, 36, and so on. Now, let's try it for 9. If you have 9 children, one child gets one sweet. You will need 9 sweets, right? But if each child gets 2 sweets, then you will have 9 times 2. You will need to have 18 sweets, right? If each child gets 3 sweets, then you will have 9 times 3, which is 27. So again, you can see that all this continues. 
Now, smallest number of suites that you probably need in this case will be a common multiple 36 and 36. This must be the number, okay? Because it works for either four children or nine children. So answer is 36. Okay, now we're going to move on to the word problems, which is on question 15 onwards. It's about uh, five questions. Let's start with question number 15, shall we? This is a story about three people, Ryan, Tim, and Anne. They all together, they have 375 picture cards. Now, Tim has 15 more picture cards than Ryan. So based on this sentence, I'm going to draw something to show that Tim, T, actually has 15 more. So this is a comparison model that's made out of Tim, which is 15 more than Ryan. So that's how a model looks like between Tim and Ryan. Now we go on and look at the third person. Now, at the third person, we are comparing Ant with Ryan. And it seems that Ant has twice as much as Ryan. So I will have a third person called Ant. And I'm comparing Ant with Ryan. So I'm comparing this person with this person. Now Ant has twice. So that means... This person has twice of Ryan. This person will look like Ryan, but twice of it. Okay, now do we know the total? We said that it is a total of 375. Now I emphasize on colors. What do we color? We color all the equal units. So these are all your equal units that you're going to color. Okay, 15 is not an equal unit, so we're not going to do that. So first step, let's try to take away, okay, let's try to take away, sorry, let's try to take away this 15 extra first. So 375 minus away 15, which is going to give me 360. Now removing that 15, I have only got 360 left. Now this 360 belongs to one unit here, one unit here, one unit here and one unit here. So a total of four units, 360. This is after I've taken the 15 away. So we always try to find for one unit, which is 360 divided by four, I get 90. Now question is how many picture cards does N have? So we are interested in this one. N has how many units? What do you think? She has? Two units, right? So looking at the picture, she has two units. I'll need to multiply 90 by 2. And I'll have the answer 180. Okay. Now that's for question number 15. Colors helped. Now question number 16. Josh, Sam and Mac have 1,287 erasers altogether. And we are now starting to compare with two people first. Josh has 20 more than Sam. So we have this person called we have this person called Josh. We have another person called Sam. Now Josh has 20 more than Sam. So Josh is going to look longer by 20. Now for now I will prefer all the numbers goes into the box, which is easier to see. Okay, so the sentence here is done. Now, Mac has 35 more than Josh. So we have a third person called Mac and we are comparing Mac with Josh. Now, Josh is here. And we are going to have a person called Mac. Now, the reason why I put it on top because if I put them side by side, it's very easy for me to compare. When I compare, I always want them to be close to each other, so it's easier to compare. Now, Mac has 35 more than Josh. So, Mac's model will look exactly the same as Josh, except that now, she also has an extra 35. 
right? So we are comparing with Josh. Uh, Josh, same. But for Mac, we have 35 more than that. So what I always get you to do, you always have to color the equal units again, right? You color the equal units, you color the equal units. So that's three units. Now, do we know the total? We were told that it is 1,287. Okay, now there lies in the same set that we're going to do. We are going to take the total. We are going to minus away all the parts that are not equal. So that's one way you can do it, okay? Or most of you actually, you did this way. You try to find out where all the extra parts are first. Okay, can you see all the extra parts? 20, 20, 35. So I try to find out all the total parts first, which gives me 75. Then I take the total minus away those extras, which gives me this number. Okay, now I know this number here refers to how many units? This one unit here, one unit here, one unit here. So there's a total of three units and this three units is one, two, one, two. Let's always find out for what's one unit. All right, one, two, one, two divided by three, which is going to give me 404. So what is the meaning of 404? It means this is 404. Four, this is 404. This is also 404. How many erasers does Mac have? So take a look at Mac. Mac is here. So Mac actually has a total of 404 plus 20 plus a 35, which is a total of 459. Okay. All right. Question number 17. Mr. So made 8,204 cookies. He gave 200, 126 cookies to his friends. So why? Why not let's just find out how much he has first left. Alright, he gave away. So a subtraction. So this is what he has left. Now, another word for left would be remaining. So let's continue the story. He packed this remaining. Do we know how much is the remaining? 8,078. He packed these 8,078 cookies equally into 7 cookies each. This reminds me of division, right? You pack equally means you divide. So let's find out how many packets he's able to make if he packs into groups of 7. Alright, with division I get this. Let's read the story. He sold all the cookies at $5 per packet. This is for one packet. Okay, this is, I mean, this is for packets. These are all the packets that you are able to form. So since one packet is $5, what about 1,154 packets? I multiply them by $5. Okay, I will be able to get $5,770. That's how much total he earns. Okay. Now, question number 18. This is a familiar question that you have done before. All right, bought a few items. And uh, I think the sentence that you should focus on is this one. Each storybook is $4 more than each file. So we are comparing two items, a storybook as well as file. Now storybook is $4 more than the file. So storybook is going to be longer than the file. By how much? By $4. Okay, now this is just one storybook. And this is just one file. Did the person only buy one storybook and one file? Not really. The person actually bought two storybooks, four files. So I can actually show the two storybooks out by joining them. So the two storybooks will now look like that. Storybook 1, Storybook 2. Now file, the person bought 4. So there's one file, there's a second file, okay, and of course there's a third file as well as a fourth file, which I have no space. Okay, file number 3, file number 4. 
and the total is actually 104. Again, let's do some coloring. The equal units, equal units, equal units, equal units, equal units, equal units. How many units can I see? One unit, one unit, one unit, one unit, one unit, one unit. So there are extras, right? There are an extra of four and four. So same thing again. 104, I need to minus away the 4 twice. Let's take away the extras first. And I end up with 96. Now, question to ask yourself, what units makes up 96? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. So 6 units makes up 96. Let's always find 1 unit all the time. 96 divided by 6, which is 16. What was the cost of each storybook? Now, storybook, we focus over here. Let me use a color that I can show easily. Eh? This is one storybook. So, how much is one storybook? You have a 16, 16 on each unit, right? So, a storybook will be $16 plus a $4 inside. This is your part, part, whole model. So, the answer in this case is $20. Okay, so units, dollars. Alright, we come to our last question, which is question number 19. This is about Rani who has some stamps. If she give each friend five stamps, she will have four stamps left. So she can, this guy, this, this girl, sorry, can give five stamps and she will have four stamps left. But she can also give instead of five stamps, let's say she's generous enough, she can give her friends seven stamps instead. Okay, now we do not know how many friends does she have. But if she gives five stamps to each person, each person gets five stamps. She will need five if there's only one friend. If she has two friends, she will need 10 stamps. If she has three friends, she will need 15 stamps. If she has 4 friends, how? 4 times 5, right? She'll have 20. So you notice that I'm again writing out all the multiples. Okay, now what about 7 stamps? If she gives 7 stamps, she has only one friend, that means she has 7 stamps, right? If she has 2 friends, that means she will need to give away 14 stamps. If she has 3 friends, she will need to give 7 times 3, which is 21 stamps. So you notice again, I'm here listing out all the multiples of 7. Okay, it can go on, but I stop at some point first. Now let's read the story carefully. Eh? Let's talk about the 5 stamps thing first. Now if she gives 5 stamps each, she will have 4 stamps left. That means even if she gives out 5 to each of the friends, she will have a remainder of 4, right? So that means to say, let's take a look uh, one by one. Now imagine that she only had one friend. She has given 5 stamps away already. She will still have 4 left, right? So in actual fact, she would supposed to have 5 plus 4. She's supposed to have 9 stamps. Because if she has 9 stamps, she gave away 5, she has 4 left. Same here. If she gave away 10 stamps, because they are two friends, right? She is supposed to have 14 stamps at the start. If she gave away 15 stamps, that means at the beginning, she was supposed to have 19 stamps. So you notice the pattern continues like that. This is all the stamps that she was supposed to have because it will always have, she will always end up with four remainder. So the, at first, she was supposed to have all this, uh, all this number of stamps. Okay, so I can continue. Okay, now let's look at situation number two. If she gives each friend seven stamps, she will be short of six. Wow, interesting. So that means if she gives more, she will end up having a shortage, a shortage of six. So take for example number one. If she gives out seven stamps, she will be short of six. That means she don't really have seven at all. She's only have one stamp. 
Because if she gives out seven, she will be short of six. That means she only have one at the beginning. Here, 14. If she gives out 14, she's actually short of 6. So that means 14 minus 6, 8. She only has 8 stamps actually. Alright, she doesn't have 14. She only has 8 stamps because she's short of 6. So you follow the pattern, you will find that you get all these numbers out. Short of 6 forever. She's short of 6 forever. Okay, she's short of 6 forever. Now, you notice that there are numbers that repeat. 29, 29. So this will tell us that actually, Rani only has 90, 29 stamps. Okay, this is like solving a puzzle with all the clues that you are given. So 29 is the answer. Okay, so I'll see you and also your attendance code for this activity will work like this okay this is how your attendance code will actually work so you are going to fill in a five digit attendance code the first two digit is made up of your register number and the last three digit is our class so if your register number is 1, your attendance code will be this. If your register number is 36, okay, your attendance code will be this. Alright, so I leave you to write your attendance code. You can pause the video to write the attendance code. So with that, I've come to the end of this test. Alright, we will have a proper weighted assessment in the next term and I'll see you again.